This week, find out how to make animations that you can play directly in Jupyter Notebooks with HTML play controls. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. This week, we're going to start to wrap up our radar series, but we're going to talk about making animations that you can look at directly in your Jupyter Notebook. This doesn't just apply to radar data. You could, of course, do this with surface data, with satellite data, or even just with uh, time series, temperature, or whatever else you have that you might want to animate somehow, whether it's on a map or not. So we've got a condensed version here of what we had last time to get our data. So I've got all my imports up at the top. I am getting a radar server object. I'm querying it. You'll notice I changed the station from last time. So we've got a little bit of weather to look at today. And then we can see what we got back from our query. So remember, sorter is going to show us in time order. And we'll look at the data sets that are there. And you see we've got a few data sets that were returned uh, from the station and variable that we were expecting. Great, so we've got our data. Now we need to refactor how we were doing plotting. And last time we just had a lot of plot calls. You know, it was one big script that just ran. In this case, we're going to put our plotting functionality into a function. I'm going to call it plot radar. So the way we define a function, of course, is def plot radar. We'll take the data, and then we'll take the field name that we're plotting. And why we're making this a function will be clear uh, here pretty soon, but we're not quite there yet. So now I'm going to go ahead and add back in some of the code that we've already talked about and already written to get the range, azimuth, the reflectivity, and then set an extent of the plot using axe.setExtent and do our p color mesh. So now we've got our function, getting the range, azimuth, and reflectivity values. We're setting the extent. In this case, I'm using three degrees from the radar's location and longitude and latitude, calculating the x and y positions. And then I'm using get with range for the color table now. Uh, last time we looked at this, we used to get with steps. In this case, get with range is going to evenly divide our color table up between minus 30 and 100 dBZ, which turns out to be about right for making this particular scan uh, give us the best contrast and the best insight into what's happening here. It also pretty closely matches what the Weather Service uses. And then notice I'm capturing the P color mesh here, a handle to it called mesh, and that's what the function is returning. Okay, next we're going to have some more code that we've seen before. I'm going to define the field name that we're looking for. And then we're going to get one of the files, just the first data set uh, in the, the query catalog. And from that, pull out all the projection information. So let's do that. So we have the projection to go ahead and start making our map. Okay, so now we've got all that we're ready to start making our plot. So we're going to go ahead and create a figure and an axis here. So fig is plot.figure. In this case, I'm going to specify a fig size of 10 by 10. 
and then axe is going to be fig add subplot one row one column first panel projection is proj one thing we're going to do a little differently now is I'm going to create an empty list called artists. This list is going to store the artists that draw the P color mesh and that draw a text object for the valid time of the radar scan. And then we'll animate over this list of artists using matplotlib's artist animation. So to do this, we're going to make a loop uh, one thing we should do outside the loop, though, is go ahead and add our states, because we're not going to need to add those each time. So add feature, state borders, let's use a black edge color, line width of 2, and z order of 2. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create our loop. So for a data set name in sorted, and the sorted is important, otherwise your radar images will be not time sorted, but randomly sorted. In the data sets in our query catalog. So for each data set that we've got there, I'm going to go ahead and grab a handle to the data set. Then we're going to get the data. Remember our little trick to find the field name uh, by using does it end with raw? So we're going to go ahead and pull the field name out automatically here. So for each variable in data.variables.values, this will be called a list concatenation. If the variable has greater than or equal to two dimensions and does not end with raw, All right. We're almost done here. We're going to go ahead and this time manually plot instead of using add timestamp, a timestamp for the radar image. Add timestamp currently forces the text created in front of the timestamp. That will not be the case in the next version of MetPy, but I thought that was maybe a little confusing last week. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and manually add the text. So we want in the middle of the plot, XYs, so 0 0.5, a little bit above the top of the plot. I'm going to use the coverage start time. The horizontal alignment we want is center. And we have to tell it that we want to transform this with respect to the axes object, not the data. So that 0 0.5 is the center of the axis, not 0 0.5 in data coordinates. Gonna go ahead and call our function that we made, plot radar. And remember to catch its return, which is the mesh. Now we're going to add into our artists list here. So artists.append, then we're going to append a list that has the text and mesh in it. So if we made no typos, which we didn't, so we corrected that typo, now we see we've got a typo up here, if we look at our stack trace, we have a misspelling of variables in the plot radar function. So it's where ref equals, and it's right there. 
Now we should be good to go. We're running. So it's looping through each of those data sets, adding the text and mesh to the artists, which will allow us to animate it. Now you see we get this mess that's got a bunch of times up here, and we have some conglomeration of the radar data there. Let's actually look at this as an animation, though. There are a couple ways to do this. The neatest one is using JavaScript and HTML to render in the notebook with some player controls. To do that, we need to set an RC parameter for matplotlib. Uh, that's the animation.html parameter. We need to tell it to use JSHTML. So do that with plot.rcparams. We access an element of the dictionary, animation.html, and we set it equal to JSHTML. Now we need to actually import the animation artist, or the, the artist animation, from matplotlib. So from matplotlib.animation, import artist animation. Now we can go ahead and create the actual animation. We say that we're going to use the figure object fig. We give it our list of artists, which in this case is a list of lists. And we specify how fast we want to loop, 100 milliseconds per frame should be fine here. And then we'll display it. This takes a few seconds to run as it's going through that list of lists, creating all of the frames, and then we get it here in the notebook. We have these handy player controls down here, so we can click play and play it forwards. We can have it reflect, so it goes to one end and then back to the other. We can play it backwards and looping. You can change the speed. So you've got all these really nice controls that you get pretty much for free. That's great for looking through the data, but if you want to share this with somebody, you might want to save it as an animated GIF. If you have Image Magic installed, which should be Conda installable, you can actually just call animation.save test.gif writer equals image magic. Notice the spelling there and we run that, it's going to run, and then in the same directory as your notebook, you will have test.gif, which is this animation saved as a GIF that you could tweet out, put on social media, uh, embed on your website, whatever you wanted to do. I hope that you found this helpful and can apply it to many types of interesting time series data in your research. If this video was useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to us on YouTube so you get notifications when more videos like this come out. You can find us on Twitter at MetPy and at Unidata, and we're also on Facebook. Just search for Unidata. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.